Big day, Will. Big day. I appreciate you coming on, brother. I of really course. do. Of course. Thanks for having me on. Awesome. No problem, dude. So I've been, I was kind of introduced to you through a couple mutual friends, whether it be for, through Chris and through Pat, and then slowly kind of just being told what kind of, what you do, what you represent, and then meeting you over like FaceTime and then meeting you just now in person. I'm super excited to have you on the show, super excited to talk to you and learn about you and learn from you. And I, uh, I'm stoked, man. I'm, re I'm really grateful. That's all it is. Yeah, so, no, thanks for having me on. on. As soon as you reached out, I was extremely excited to come discuss anything with you, whether awesome. it be yeah. any topic. Um, and our mutual friends, I mean, come on, Chris and Pat. Yeah, he doesn't get much yeah. better than that, for sure. For sure, and I'm sure I'll say the same about uh, you and them as well. So, man, yeah. that's epic. But uh, so, getting started, uh, kind of take us through, um, we'll start your journey, if you will, uh, Tell us a bit about yourself, starting kind of from like your life leaving high school to kind of how we got to now, and then we'll uh, go through it from there. Right, so leaving high school, I was a little bit, I would say, kind of confused about where I wanted to go. Yeah. So um, my dad owns a contracting company. Um, so I actually first went to college for construction engineering, did it for a year, didn't like it, yeah. did business for a year. Um, did that and realized that that really wasn't a passion of mine. No, I Back in high school, I actually did uh, the musical Grease, and I was Danny Zuko. No and, way. and it was out of nowhere, Amazing. like out of nowhere. Amazing. Like, I had I hadn't really done yeah. anything like that before, but I loved drama class. I loved yeah. to entertain people, right and that experience kind of drove me to this thought of entertainment. Mm -hmm. And I'm a big music guy as well. Yeah. So after those degrees, I decided to head to Vancouver nice. out west and do audio engineering music production. Nice. I love making music. I love creating music. I think that there's something really special about it. Mm -hmm. Then I came back from there and started uh, on a whim, really, at CTV Ottawa. Yeah. My friend was the supervisor there and asked for me to... Uh, be a part-time nice. promotions person. So I was the guy at the other side of the street, listen to win, you know. Like, no. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. So Amazing. I started from there and worked my way up to a full-time position. Nice. Ended up becoming uh, really close with the VP there and worked yeah. right under him. And then realizing where I was, there's four radio stations, two TV stations, a morning show, and CTV News. Mm. Realized I wanted to be on the other side, and that's always kind of been there for yeah. me. And nice. the news directors in Ottawa approached me about being on air. And then I talked to the VP and came here to Northern Ontario to be the weather anchor. So that's kind of where cool. it all began. Yeah, yeah it's that's quite cool the, story, yeah. the journey, but um, I absolutely love it. Nice. Dude, that's awesome. So uh, before we get a bit more into that and like kind of why... Um, you got you got there from where you started, but lyrics or um, the audio uh, music instrumental part of the song, which do you prefer? Ooh, um, I would probably say the audio, just because I love creating melodies. Okay, so I on. love like I would write and write and write yeah. songs that I wouldn't be able to finish a song because I would just write a melody. I just there's something uh, fascinating see, yeah. about it. I still nice. love lyrics and what they mean uh, to many songs, but the let's say orchestral part, yeah. those type of melodies, they're my favorite. Right on. Yeah. Okay, cool, yeah, I had to ask when you said it, because I'm like, you're a big piano guy? Yeah. So I'm like, ooh, okay, nice. That's cool, that's really fascinating, dude. So, what was, um, like, why Vancouver, of all the places? Because you, where did you start, you start Ottawa? Ottawa, so, yeah. Yeah, so you know what? I had never really gone outside of Ottawa. Um, I had gone to visit friends at college and here and yeah. doing that stuff, but experiencing anything outside of Ottawa I hadn't really done, and I heard how beautiful it was at West. And the program that I was doing, it was the top program for that specific area mm -hmm. in the country. You know, it was, you go in there, you're in the yeah. studio every day, you learn about Pro Tools at Ableton, and it was a, a very special group of people mm -hmm. and instructors that yeah. really were able to teach you things. So that was kind of the the whole reason I wanted to go do that because I was like, right. this, if I'm going to do this, this is the spot. And I'm really happy I did. I didn't experience Vancouver <laughs> as much as I had hoped because yeah. I was in the studio so much. Yeah, so I didn't, I didn't get out there, but that's kind of what led me uh, to Vancouver. Nice. Yeah. Um, oh, so you didn't get to... Where uh, you went to... What school did you go to for the engineering? Um, so that was Algonquin yeah. College. You went to Algonquin as well. Yeah, nice. which was five minutes from my house. Yeah, so really... Good. Uh, I lived in I lived in like, PN, yeah. so which is just like right around the corner. I actually stayed in Res too. Oh, which nice. is hilarious! For, amazing, yeah. you got to, you got <laughs> I to, to get the experience, sure. right? You have to. Yeah, yeah, amazing. Because I, uh, do you know where Woodfield Drive is? Yeah, oh yeah. I live there. 
Oh, three years. No way. I went to school in Ottawa, yeah. You know what? I feel like every time you have a conversation with someone, especially around here, it's like, there's always a connection yeah, somewhere like that, Especially right? to Ottawa, yeah. Especially yeah. to Ottawa, that, like, yeah. That one I found it with, like, Pat as well and a few other people. I'm like, oh, no way. You know where this street is? And they're like, dude, my mom lives there. I'm like, I yeah. did too. It's unbelievable. Different house, but, you <laughs> yeah. know. But you were there, yeah. Yeah, but I was there, and I started walking a dog, and you're like, I don't have a dog. I'm like, well, all right. Oh, okay. But, dude, yeah, that's incredible. So, how'd you, um, so you got here through, like, it started out, and then a friend brought you here, or a friend recommended you in Ottawa, right? Um, yeah, then, so like, yeah. he was the uh, the VP of, of Bell Media in Ottawa. Like, right yeah. Yeah, and then you, like, kind of applied to come to Sudbury? Yeah, so, I mean, it was basically, like, I was doing promotional work at CTV Ottawa, starting yeah. to do the on-air things. And this full-time position came available. So I came, drove down here, interviewed, and kind of got a, a lay of the land before mm -hmm. picking up and moving over here. And then um, I was offered the job um, that day. It took some time to think about yeah. it. And then came, which was which was a big decision for me because all my friends and family are in Ottawa. Yeah. So to pick up and leave all that behind. And, you know, to be honest with you, even, like, when I was coming here, I didn't realize how, like, Sudbury's in this triangle between, like, Toronto and Ottawa. It's not, like, yeah, close to either. Yeah, no. it's no, no, no. So, um, so it's further yeah. away, but it was probably the best decision I ever made. So, tell me about that interview process. Like, what's it? What's that interview process of right like? He, you probably don't just sit down and answer five questions about yourself and then leave. No, definitely not. So, going into it, you have to have a a demo. So, a demo of whether it's news stories, promotional okay. work, you have to be able to show what you can do behind the camera in a role like mine. Um, so you need to have that as well as your resume laid out. Huh. So it's what, that's why it's so difficult for people in our industry to get there because you need that resume to continue and to it climb. Takes the time to build that up. Um, so I didn't have too much. So yeah. I actually created my own life story video from when I was a kid. I went Amazing. to my high school. I went to my middle school. I went to everywhere. Oh, I went to the Sens Arena and basically did a time lapse of my life in an interview style. Whoa, dude. So, uh, really yeah. Idea. You, know, you know what? Yeah, that's I, not bad. I didn't have anything, right? <laughs> I did some promotional work, but that was it. And, oh, and they cool. loved it. Um, and then the questions are more, for my role specifically, because I'm, I'm weather and entertainment, it's mm. not like the news side, they wanted to have a different type of role. So I came into here thinking like, I want to be traveling the road. I want mm -hmm. to do more than just weather. I want to have some fun things going on. So we were on the yeah. exact same page. Nice. And it's basically, from a news director standpoint, if they can see you and how comfortable you are hmm. and have those same visions, nice. then you're going to be okay. So that's that, awesome. yeah, the, yeah. The, it was a very different interview process than before when it's like, oh, what'd you do? How'd you graduate? Yeah. What, what's your five-year plan? Like, it's really not like that. Right. Um, so it was unique. Ah, oh, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, um, have you had any... Like, I guess, better question, what's the greatest experience you've had so far in Sudbury through your work? Ooh, good question. Um, you know what? I would probably narrow it down to two. Um, one would be when I went live at the uh, international plowing matches in Werner. So there was over 100,000 people roll through there. And that was the biggest thing I'd been yeah. to. And the amount of people that would come up and say hello yeah. or you know, know who I was. It was, it was a, a glimpse of, wow, like I'm just behind a camera every day, yeah. but I can see the impact that that has within the community. Right. Um, not to mention helicopter rides and all the fun stuff. That's sweet. Yeah, that's not bad. That's um, not bad. and then, bad and then through work would be, um, my panel with purpose that I did mm -hmm. as well. Um, just yeah. because of the community support there. So it's, it's amazing to see, Sudbury, Greater Sudbury, and Northern Ontario as a whole, yeah. um, how close it is and how great the people are here. So those are my experiences. It, it's the people. Mm -hmm. That's That's been my biggest takeaway since coming here. That's really cool because I've heard, I've heard separate responses to similar questions when asking people, whether that be just with the community of, it's like, uh, it's an older mining town, right? So yeah. the community can kind of be, say, stubborn or not open to change as much for lack of better terms but i think when we when it comes down to doing things well and doing things for with your intent being for the greater good or like you said when we first uh, chatted over facetime was like doing things just to be like a bit of a bright light in somebody's day because that makes a huge difference right yeah absolutely like, i've had bad days and then i've had somebody pay like pay for to cough me coffee of mine and i'm like this is the greatest day. And that's it. Yeah. That's all it takes. Like a For simple sure. act of kindness like that to change someone's day 
Um, and I think that's the most important thing that you can do mm -hmm. in this world is is you don't know what someone might be going through on a daily basis yeah. just by looking at them. So yeah, even a small everybody. gesture like that, everybody, yeah, everybody is is so meaningful. And I think about that every single time mm -hmm. I go live, every time I do the weather or meet somebody, think about what is the positive impact that I can yeah. have with on, within this person. Right on. Yeah. Now, what's uh, what's been the most probably challenging career-wise? What's been like something that's been the biggest challenge for you or like hurdle or obstacle you almost have to face? Yeah, you know what? It's I'm sure that many people are going to say this, but like <laughs> going into this career right now, it's been COVID because yeah. I was somebody that no one in my position had done before. I was traveling all of Northeastern Ontario. Like yeah. by, on a week basis, I was going up from here, hitting the Sioux, going nice. to Wawa, and yeah. I was going into all the little towns, you know, nice. That's noon, cool. yeah, noon at yeah. one spot, five and six at the other. And I was getting to experience That's all sweet. of Northeastern yeah. Ontario. Oh, that's cool. And that was, that was the best part of my job. Mm -hmm. And then when COVID hit, we shut down. So all we, of that. All, everything shut down, so ah. I'm not traveling. I was the only anchor that got moved into my home so I was working from home for the past year and a half all the other anchors we had one anchor at a time into the newsroom and I was at home so the hardest thing I would say was continuously trying to bring that energy mm. on a daily basis whatever 12 times a day yeah. just sitting in my apartment <laughs> with a camera that's tricky yeah, yeah so man. you know what it was no uh fun. No, it was definitely it was definitely challenging, mm -hmm. uh, especially at the beginning because you're in a new atmosphere. You know, yeah. sitting down. I always stand at the green screen, so sitting was one thing too. I love yeah, to move around and, and sure. talk with my hands. I'm it's a different. I'm it's a different. Yeah. Like, yeah, dude, I understand completely. Yeah, I, I understand completely. <laughs> so yeah, it was like different. that was that was hard yeah. for me, but uh, that's been the most challenging thing. Um, but you know what? I take it um, as a new learning experience. Yeah, and now I sure. have another thing that I'm able to do. You know, nice. it's a new atmosphere. Yeah. sitting down taking that in and it's just growing my experience so that's ah, the way that's I look cool. at it yeah did you do any like preparation or do you have <laughs> I'm sure you've seen it in uh, with like the drama classes and stuff and the entertainment um, but before every like there's vocal warm-ups and stuff before presentation stuff and before actors they have like a like a routine that they do yeah right to hit like that whether it be the high vocals or whether it be the low pitches or whatever they need to hit and then they have like their facial expressions that they need to do or the you know what i'm saying oh yeah, yeah. i know exactly so, what you're saying do you have something like that or a pre-game pre -game ritual to get in that high energy state of mind before you uh to perform on the news because essentially that's what it is yeah and especially my role as a whole because it goes yeah. for news and then for three minutes when i come yeah. on it's entertain make people want to yeah. watch the especially weather. if you want to be that standout like that personality. The sunshine of the day, yeah, and the Ex personality too. Exactly. You know what? It's funny because I'll answer that question with something that I believe, which is why I have success, yeah. is because when the camera's turned on or the mm. camera's turned off, I'm the exact Amazing. same person. Amazing. And, yeah. and that authenticity comes through. So yes. whether the camera's off before, I'm 10 seconds before the hit yes. and I'm jabbering my yeah. ear talking about the Sens loss or the Blue Jays yeah. or something hilarious until five seconds, you know, we're laughing in our ear, then boom, I'm live. So it's- Amazing. We have yeah. so much fun the yes. whole time that yeah. I just, I really just have that same mindset yeah. um, through the day. And, and it, it can be difficult at times. Like if you're having a bad day, yeah. um, you can't show that. No, you can't show that. And people yeah. notice. Like if I have, if I'm a little sure. bit off, you, you'll get emails. You'll Especially get when you're okay. that high. Exactly. People notice when you're a bit lower. They come mm -hmm. down and you know what? Yeah. And everyone has their days. Everyone sure. has bad days, but right. it actually. You're only human, right? So, yeah. But it still benefits me because I feel yeah. like when I do have to turn it on in retrospect, that actually helps you become into a better move or whatever you're dealing right. with because yeah. you're, you're putting on that face and then I remember what I'm doing. But yeah, I'm just, honestly, nice. man, I'm just myself. Um, and, and that's like, like that's the ritual. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I've seen, it's cool that you talk about authenticity because this has been kind of a point of conversation with a couple of close friends of mine as of late where it's tough to be authentic, especially nowadays in a world where everybody's trying to do something that everybody else has done. Oh yeah. Whether it be, I'd have, I'd have like entrepreneur friends and I hate that word, dude. I'm sorry, but I yeah. had a lot of friends we're entrepreneurs and they're all starting to box like they're like oh we oh. should do box i'm like listen <laughs> you guys are both gonna get hurt and nobody's gonna watch it's gonna be painful yeah please do it safely if you do but like there's so many people doing different things and they see the results of one person i think just by doing it yeah it'll be exact the same for them 
not the case, and right? Boxing. Yeah. Why is boxing so like everyone? Oh, like all these new people, like all going into it. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, like, it's I like... have no idea. And it's not. It's not an easy thing either. No. And it. No, it's not fun to get punched in the head. No. You know. Yeah. Not a big fan. So thankfully, it hasn't happened a lot of times. But that could be just a self thing where I just don't want to get hit so I just don't put myself in that scenario uh, yeah but um that's that's a pretty good right idea. like yeah. I don't like getting hit in the head I'm gonna put myself in scenarios where I don't get hit in the head yeah absolutely <laughs> so with that um how difficult is it for you to stay authentic and to be yourself in a world that and society that doesn't allow you to almost do that like it makes it very tough to do that especially nowadays right? yeah and you know what i think about how grateful i am in a position where i'm able to do something yeah. like this um and i have a platform where i'm able to make a difference like we mm -hmm. said something a small gesture like buying someone's Ooh, coffee right yeah. has tremendous impact mm -hmm. so i think that with the work that i'm able to do and be that positive light in everyone's day mm -hmm. um, hopefully it's like allowed me to be happy about that yeah so i think it's it, it's super awesome. important and it, it's very difficult because some people don't have that and i i know that i'm somebody that is in a position where it doesn't mm. feel like a job and it's a passion that's huge and it's man. huge and, yeah. and and i've been on the other side you know i was behind the scenes on the business side in the same company and it's it's a complete 180 and still i had great really? experiences and yeah. learned about the inside of the company which has benefited me towards this now mm. but being able to love what I do on a daily basis yeah. um, has made me be able to be authentic and do that in this world. So I, I just I just don't take it for granted. That's amazing. I think you have to, at that point, especially in order to grow and be comfortable in your own skin, is to be grateful, mm -hmm. right? And express that gratitude towards whether it be like close friends, just being like, yeah, have an amazing day. Yeah. Just little things right just telling people how much you care or how much you're like you know i value what you're saying or who you are to me and i think that's something that as of not so much lately but i used to do like once a week i would call and this was crazy because anybody a lot of people could text a lot of things yeah but to call somebody and voice to, like voice to voice is very like it's tough a lot of people hold back right yeah. that's why the whole like everybody's a keyboard warrior yeah right but it's the whole like say things say it to me to my face not rarely happens Right, especially nowadays but if you call somebody and it's even more challenging and you might not see this or you might but giving compliments is not that easy but taking them is a lot harder I yeah find. definitely and to being able to like do that as a form of like expressing your gratitude for somebody or what they mean to you i think lately has been something that's it's a lost and especially in a time where everyone's mildly depressed yeah as like a neutral state of mind it's like oh how are you i'm like well i'm always a bit more depressed than i used to be yeah. right just with what's going on so that phone call or facetime is so much more meaningful than a text Dude. it's uh it's unbelievable the change it's that just like hearing your friend's thing, voice yeah. and, and you can hear the like you said authenticity you can hear them wanting to know about your day or giving mm -hmm. you a compliment or something like that yeah and, and it's the same for me like ever since i moved here over the last couple of years i have surrounded myself with people that are the most positive Amazing. people I, yeah. like I've ever met and all we want is the best for each other best whether for that's other. for your career whether mm -hmm. it's for an event you're doing your yeah, training 100% and, and and to be completely honest with you that's what's kept me here um, Amazing. so far yeah. it's those relationships that I've built since I've moved to Sudbury based on those exact things oh that's awesome yeah have you like you started out when you started on Sudbury did you start with that mindset of like looking for those people or did you find a couple people that were maybe not your type of people a year later or um it just happened amazing, um, amazing. i went to it actually happened all at apex warrior the gym yep. i go to shout um, out to them so yeah oh, yeah. yeah they um that's where i met everyone mm -hmm. um dennis lego is the gym owner there yep. and me and him became best friends instantly amazing yeah. uh, we have a I lot in common oh so he's tell he's me. the best I'm you know like, what ah. the reason why <laughs> I'm talking about these people and yeah. how great of friends are going to be for the rest of my life mm -hmm. is because of him is because he is the leader of the gym and he projects his energy upon everybody that comes in. So it's, yeah. it's, it's his gym and it's his energy. And now I've met friends that I'll have for a lifetime. That's cool, dude. I love that you said 
you didn't say he's the owner of the gym when you introduced kind of what his role is. You're like, he's the leader. Yeah, right? he's I'm the like, leader. Amazing. Or, or is he like the Apex boss? The Apex boss. Okay? Yeah, that's, right. boss. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he likes. Yeah, doesn't get more uh, top of the mountain, eh? <laughs> no, oh, it does not. Awesome. Hey, man, like, believe it, right? Yeah. Like, go for it for sure. Um, I think that was something that I found because of how long I've lived in Sudbury since I moved back, like, been three, four years now, um, since school ended and stuff. I found that you gravitate towards people who you used to be friends with. And I found, and I'm sure you might've noticed this like with old, old friends, but people tend to drift off. And I think a lot of it happens when you're like, I want to do this. And people are like, ah, whatever, maybe. But then you actually put in the work and the steps to do that. And you're not just doing it for a week. You're doing it for like months, months turns to years. And people are like, oh, you're getting better at this thing that three years ago you were, you had no idea about. And I feel people have an issue with, they almost get intimidated by people trying to achieve their goals. And then they drift apart. You drift apart, but you succeeding don't see that. Yeah. Right? Oh, and yeah. the few times this has happened, I've had people point it out, be like, that's why they're not around. Because you want to do this. And it could be something small, right? It could be like, oh, um, I don't really like, oh, I want to start a podcast. I want to have all these cool people on. I want to learn. I want to grow. I want to talk. I want to share. Like, build community, build friends, everything. And they're like, oh, you can't start a podcast. Why but then you that? do it. Yeah. And they're like, that's weird. Yeah. Right? It's weird to them. It's this thing that you think of an idea and then you manifest it. Yeah. And you turn it into something that could be good. You know what, man? It's weird. And it, it, it's funny you say that because upon reflection over the last few years, mm -hmm. I have an incredibly close group from home back in Ottawa that awesome. spread out a little bit. Yeah. But every you know it's it's big partiers. It was going to the bars all the time. It was doing all these things. And you since have I came to do. here, it's you know yeah. which which you, which yeah. you do have to do. And since I came here, it was all health, fitness, Amazing. meditation, yeah. bettering myself, becoming a better all overall person of, of what that meant to me. Right. And originally, to some of our friends, you know, it might be like, oh, like he's just doing this now or that now. But now we're at the point where it's had a positive impact on even them, or like they support every single thing that yeah. I'm doing, and it's actually push them to do certain ah, athletic cool. or fitness things, which, which is cool. really cool for that me. That is, man. You're inspiring. Yeah, that. because, that's awesome. because it's, it's yeah. hard to step out of a, an area like that and then ah, feel like, well, I'm, I'm going down this path now. Mm -hmm. I hope that my other path doesn't neglect me or judge me because I'm doing this now. Ah, and they cool. don't. And, and that was a phenomenal feeling to be able to yeah. live this life. Still have, you know, your weekends and you do sure. stuff like that. Go you to the bars. To, right? You're, you need you're to. human. You want to. Exactly. Yeah, you got to let loose. right? Um, problem, so. But that was, it's, it's, it's a really incredible feeling having oh, both of them. Awesome. Yeah. That's cool that it's not uh in your case especially that it sounds like it was more often than not it was people would rise with you and you'd bring people up and then you guys just elevate together. Yeah. It's just amazing. Yeah, and and, oh, and it's cool. and it's the best feeling ever. Absolutely. And, and surrounding yourself <laughs> with those people and or like constantly <laughs> is the most wonderful thing and I don't think I could ever talk about that enough and about how important that is for for your growth ah oh, that's cool today I used to have um, obviously I won't name names we used to have like uh, friends um, and let's say I hang with Pat a couple times a week you know we'll plunge whatever oh the cold like, plunge yeah, oh dude, it's you the know, best oh yeah do it. I got a cold stuff in my backyard yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. amazing <laughs> we'll get into that in a bit but yeah. um he's uh so that's what we do right we'll kick it and then we can get stuff off our chest I mean kind of we're both very like um forward growth mindset thinkers right as you can imagine yeah just from how well you know him um but I was just trying to bounce business like philosophies like hey man what are you doing with this client like the industry is how you react this way and how do you not let it get the best of you he's training for this I'm training for that you know, I'm trying to run this project. He's trying to run that. And just building these things, and you're kind of like similar schedules. Like, it's all just, all the goals are similar, right? We have them. Yeah. Best thing, we're like, oh, I don't have, go just have goals. They can be big. They can be small. They can be something completely unrelated or completely the same thing as what I'm doing. Yeah. Don't care. It doesn't matter. It's all goals at the end of the day. And I think something from going, hanging out with a few, like, that just play video games or they just had, like, a, a negative, like, way of looking at things like oh i like their places were a disaster yeah like it what you, like hey man come on over for food i'm like food there's like i don't want to come over and just sit and do nothing right yeah so i can do nothing by myself I, don't, I can play music or do something right edit anything right and so seeing that almost shift of like a 
you're almost envious when you're in that stage. I found myself envious of people doing well or doing achieving what they wanted to achieve and working on what they wanted to work on. And I found myself not focusing a lot of time on working on my own shit, but a lot of time focusing on what other people were doing. Yeah. And that was a uh, not healthy. No, to have, say the least. having your own goals is super important no matter what yeah. they are. And I think that when you realize that you've surrounded yourself with like the group of people mm. like we talk about and then yeah. you go into an atmosphere that's negative and you can tell right away the effect it's that that's going to have on you. Yeah. yeah, it is. It's it's like a, <laughs> the light just shines. It's crazy, isn't it? You're just like, oh. Yeah, you're like I used to. I used to, yeah. Turn on. I used to surround yeah. myself with this. I used to like kind of be like this. And I, you're just like, 100%, what, what was right? I doing? But, yeah. but again, like yeah. I, I never have. I never have any regrets because everything that you you do you learn from and it gets you to where you are. Exactly. So knowing right. that it's, it's, yeah. but, you, but you still sometimes think that oh man I can't believe like was, yeah, like that's what I used to do was, or yeah. yeah or I used to have the energy like that once you step out of it yeah. or you put you would put your energy towards those things. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, why is all my energy on what other people I barely know are doing? Yeah. It's like I'm gonna get mad at them because they're spreading positivity and I'm just not that happy. Yeah. What's the what's the problem? So then it's like an insecurity, but then you feed off, like you said, it's almost like you're the byproduct of the five people. But if you start start hanging around with people who are like they're trying to achieve this, they're like training for like worlds in this, but then they want to be in the Olympics there, and then yeah. and they're like running this business, and then you're you're like, well, I can only get better by being with them. And then somebody said something. Uh, my trainer Pat way back, my Pat Bryce uh, way back when, I was like, you know, like um, it was. Uh, one of my good training partners, Corey, and our jiu-jitsu professor, the two of them would always invite me and we'd be doing like separate private classes, like the three of us, like during the whole like COVID, how yeah. it would be like, yo, gym's closed, but like, yo, the three of us, like, let's go train. And it was cool because you never had that time off. So there was no weird like uh, plateaus, but we would do that. And I was like, I was telling him, I was like, hey man, like, I'm like, I'm grateful. You know, I get to be with them, you know, I train, like it's cool. Mm -hmm. that they, they're like, dude, he's like, dude, that's, a testament of what they think of you as well and i never thought about it like, like that yeah. right like all these you're around all these cool people you're like man like the apex boss like all these people they're like man like chris pat right all these people like doing big things spreading the utmost like i don't have the stamina to be that positive all the time and they're doing it and it's not it's not a fake it's not a fad there's no imposter about it like that's just who they are and what they're doing and they project it all the time and that was something that I was like, you know, never even thought about it. But yeah. you know they're probably thinking the same thing, if not something similar, at the least, about you. Yeah, well, that's why you get Which along so crazy. well, right? Because, and, and that's a, such a good point, because you don't think about that. Who no. thinks about themselves in that way? You think about the people you, you surround yourself with. Exactly. You them, and yeah. they're like, oh, yeah, well, I'm around... I'm around them because, and they're around me because we all think the same or we think Whoa. the same of each other. Yeah, yeah, that's like a, that's a mind. That was cool, right? Because you're 100% <laughs> right, right? Like you don't, you don't think about what other people think about why you're there. Like, man, why am I hanging out with these people? Yeah. You don't look at it that way, no. especially from a constructive, positive point, right? Yeah. I think it's easier. And as humans, we default to negativity. Oh yeah. As it's, much as like. It's much easier to be negative than it is to be happy. Yeah. It takes a lot of, uh, a lot of thought. So. Yeah, you know, and, and the basis behind what I've definitely learned over the last couple of years is you need to be, like, happy within yourself mm -hmm. and to project that and be there for other people. Yeah. So, like, and I think that a lot of us have that, too. We're, like, we're all, like, really happy with, like, where we are and we know who we are and we're confident in that and that allows us to be these positive people to mm. anyone around us. Right. For sure. And I think with the... So, to your point, with... Um, the surrounding, uh, the who you surround yourself with is huge, but there's, with the whole self-reflection and the easier to be negative, it's something that I find myself, at least from my own experiences, you might be the same or not, but it's harder to get into a negative, like you think default. And if you're happier all the time, it's huge. And I was telling, uh, I was telling Pat, my buddy Ben, who's on the podcast I just had, um, and uh, excuse me, they both are engaged. I've been in a relationship for a few years. Whenever I see them posting cute stuff, I'm like, amazing, it warms my heart. But I have also told them both to their face multiple times, hey guys, if I was single right now, I would hate you both. Yeah. I would hate your relationships. But, you know, it's like if you're doing happy and you're doing well in that aspect, yeah. right? And you're, even if you are in a relationship and you don't feel good about it, you still have that like, oh, I'm envious, you know, I want what they have, right? And it's Perspective like, well, is everything. It's huge, dude. Yeah. It's huge. And I think, when people add that different perspective, right? Like 
the hey they think of you that way yeah as well as you think of them it's yeah a double-edged like two-way street let's say yeah you right? know what if you probably broke down when you let's just talk about like if you go into like a social media world or something and you see like a couple and they're posting like wonderful pictures and then like this getaway of weekend yeah. depending on who you are and where you're at in your life that's mm-hmm. either gonna make you feel a extremely happy for them right. and the fact that you know that <laughs> you have something like that as well yeah. and you'll like it or you'll be the other person you'll just be yeah. like oh this is so this is stupid like mm-hmm. i have to do this and that's all depending on where you're at in your life exactly and it's also a great point dude it's also a um it's a deep it's a it's deeper than just like oh yeah i'm happy for you yeah yeah right absolutely no, and that, that's more of the younger yeah, thing too, exactly right, right? Yeah. it's a it's a how you feel deep down if you're genuinely happy then there's no insecurity about that aspect yeah right which takes away from the negativity that can come out of it. it's just like yo you're genuinely happy in your relationship you're gonna be genuinely happy for mine yeah right it's not like oh so it works out better that way and i think everybody's happier and then when everybody's happier people just things grow and then you're around cooler people and more fun people and then everything just gets better yeah and you know what it's funny when i look back uh on a few situations it was it became apparent to me it's like who you are a lot about who you are yeah is really judged by who you surround yourself with 100 percent. and 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 i feel like that's it's you know when you when you come across people like you and me and we mm-hmm. talk about Pat and it's like well of course you're friends with this guy or of course you're like this because we're yeah. at the stage now we're like we're all in that same wavelength of like yeah. being positive and happy and trying to be a a greater person every day and mm-hmm. um, have a positive impact on this world and I feel like that's super important mm-hmm. oh it's huge yeah yeah it's a good way to look at it too you're like well obviously yeah you guys get along <laughs> yeah, I know. You know? like all you want to do is like train yeah and be a be a bright light in people's life and you're hanging out with this guy who's always smiling <laughs> yeah. weird how you two would find each other yeah i'm huh? like oh what's better than that what's better than <laughs> surrounding yourself with somebody that's genuinely happy every single time no matter what it is that you're doing every like single going time. to a restaurant how obvious are it we're yeah. going out we're going to eat or that you hit a fitness goal or in, or anything in your life yeah like having that positive atmosphere around you at all mm-hmm. times is amazing and i don't think it could ever be um it could ever like you could never understand the amount of wealth that that can God, have dude. on your life yeah dude it's a um, a way of like even now it's very very contagious like just talking to you now i'm like man there's an energy I'm like <laughs> yeah. it's contagious it's like, <laughs> like oh, i think we gotta yeah, stand I'm up yeah. I'm like, <laughs> you gonna rep with some biceps or what we'll go put this thing on pause real quick yeah get some pull-ups on the ring <laughs> amazing dude it's a that's a really good way of looking at it i think that's a that's a cool cool thing that if everybody you're around it's elevating and then it's contagious and then you want to be that person to other people yeah right and more sometimes it's a shame people don't rise up Mm -hmm. but then those are the like okay i know we're good friends and everything but you gotta move on yeah and when you find those people the biggest advice I could have is make sure that you continue to be around them, have yourself in their lives, have them in yours, mm-hmm. because those are the people that are extremely meaningful for your life. For so sure. like, no matter what happens here, when I, if I move on, that I know that the group of people that I've met here, yeah. I will always keep in contact for with sure. them, like forever, because it's that important. It is, yeah. That's super important. Yeah. I think, um, now, when it comes to introducing yourself to those five people or the people sorry the average people you surround yourself with and almost like picking your friends in a way right or picking the people you surround yourself with how do you go about doing that when like it's a new place or a new city or something like that yeah you know what it was all based on i would say like the energy levels that you get from someone i've i've always been a a very firm believer in like the energy that you get when you first meet someone or you surround yourself with yeah. people there's a there's like a click there yeah and depending on where you are in your life is who you're going to kind of connect with and right. i think that in at my point in my life at that time 
that's why I was able to connect with these guys mm -hmm. at Apex Warrior and girls because sure. we were all having the same goals and we had the same energy level and depending on where I was in my life I would attract different people you know yeah. when I was in the music industry it was based on people who you know when I was in Vancouver like who were creating music and we were in yeah. artists and oh like you're, you're a phenomenal singer like we should work together yeah. and now it's 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 just changed and adapted in towards you're such a, a positive, fun person, you know, you bring purpose. And like, I think yeah. purpose is, is the number one thing that I've learned within my entire life is the purpose behind everything. Mm -hmm. So like this friend group brings me so much purpose and it's all joy and laughter. Nice. And, and as soon as you see that, mm -hmm. it's just, I wanted to be around them all the time. All these yeah. adventures that I've never done before, the hiking, the camping, yeah. the trips, all the running, the training, cool. all of that. That's where I was at. Yeah. So I think it's all based on where you want to be at in your life at that time, which is yeah. who you kind of vibrate off of and connect right. with. Ah, oh, it's huge. I think, um, now with that being said, um, Take me through kind of the paddle for purpose now. Yeah. Like, let's get into that. How did that kind of, why on a paddleboard, dude? Yeah. Like, like, take me through the beginning <laughs> of that process. And from the idea and a thought in your mind. Yeah. To, or somebody's mind, to you completing it and raising money and awareness. It's funny because the stand-up paddleboard itself, when you just think about why I chose that, I had a couple of ideas in mind, maybe a, a triathlon, 24-hour mm -hmm. race, this and that, and then all of a sudden, like I was actually working on a plan of a, a bike, a run, and yes. a kayak, yeah. and then I just had this idea, and I just went, no, I'm changing this, and I'm doing a 24-hour straight stand-up paddleboard, <laughs> and I went, you don't know why, is because when someone would look at that, they mm -hmm. would go, you're doing what? And it would draw that much more attention towards what I was doing right because I think that there were so many question marks and people would be so much more interested for sure because of what it was mm -hmm. um, and Paddle of Purpose um, started because um, my brother-in-law uh, Mario mm -hmm. uh, he passed away from an extremely rare form of cancer back oh. in 2019 so um, this was a guy that was 33 years old at the time way too young healthy as can be didn't smoke a cigarette, barely oh, drank, the worked worst, out a football dude. player. He was no, yeah, he was. He that's and he so was. Bad. And you, we talk about like bright lights in people's lives. He was the brightest Definition light in anyone's that, lives. Yeah. He was the guy that made me like that <sighs> made me look bad at my own home because he's getting up in the morning and mowing my dad's grass at, at the lake or whatever it's doing. He's always Epic. has a smile on his face even when he was going through his cancer. That's and um, when he passed away, um, I had an idea in mind that I wanted to do something in his memory. And the best way that I could do that was something fitness oriented because it was a passion of mine. Yeah. And I wanted to do something where I could bring positive change because that's all he ever did. Yeah. So I discussed with my sister about an organization called CORD, the Canadian mm -hmm. Organization for Rare Disorders, which basically no one knows about. Sure. Um, like about 95, 96% <laughs> of the people that I talked to when I discussed my yeah. purpose, didn't know what the organization was, was, and that's why this was so important. Yeah. So I put together the plan um, and started training. Um, you know, I started. I as soon as that ice broke on Ramsey Lake, I was in there. Yeah. Like, like late March, early Epic. April. I mean, the cold plunges maybe not so scary because we Dude, do those anyway. Yeah, for sure. But I was on there, and the paddle people are on the boat. Like, well, are you crazy? They're fishing out there. I'm off doing my paddling. They're in their sweats. Yeah. They're, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm and I'm just in my wetsuit paddling. Um, and I we did the TV promos. I did social media campaigns. I did a lot of work. Had some great sponsors involved as well that helped push the mm -hmm. message. Um, I actually got to go on national TV on the morning That's show sick, and to talk about it, which was uh, which yeah. was really special for me. Um, not only was that special for the fact that it was able to get that word out there but mm -hmm. in, in my career that's 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 huge that's the that's top the that it goes right that's the yeah, dream for sure um that's sick so, especially doing it for something like that exactly yeah. and i was so passionate about it because it was so meaningful to me um so power purse was created yeah. did the training four times a week on the water five times in the gym and then the day came and it was it was one of the most if not will be the most incredible experience i've ever been ah, in amazing. my life for multiple reasons, um, there was so much built-up energy and emotions 
for seven months, you know, the Dude, training, the thinking yeah. about what it's for. And, and I'm an emotional guy, and Mar- Mario and I were extremely close. So mm. I was able to see through that paddle the support that I had through my family, through my friends here, mm-hmm. through companies um, that provided the boat money whatever it would be yeah. Remacle has provided me with like the board you know nice. like all these companies that stepped up and understood my purpose mm-hmm. people like Matt and Chris who came on the support boat my girlfriend Jerrica who was mm-hmm. there throughout the 24 hours Amazing. just the energy levels that were there and the amount of support that I saw gave me a, a new sort of feeling that I've never felt before mm-hmm. um, and then I went through the paddle and I had people coming out on boats, handing checks, people waving at their docks, waiting for me to go by, Epic. all lined up at Bell Park yeah. from the beginning, middle, and end, just yeah. waving, like giving their support, yeah. seeing the total money that was raised. It's and always then, going up, yeah. Always going up. And, um, and just seeing how just doing that fundraiser could positively impact this world and seeing the, the community come as a whole mm-hmm. just showed the true power of what we can do Jeez. when we yeah. want to do something positive like that in this world and that was it was so powerful to me to see the impact that you can have especially when you're working together um and and that was the biggest thing for me and there was a few moments on that paddle i think it was at hour 18 19 when i was paddling you know and we had a lot of fun the boat had like a slide on it the support boat people are going on and off of that but there was like this window between about like 18 and, and 21 22 hours where i got into this groove where i was just thinking about mario and paddling and and, and given the year that we've had it's been COVID is everywhere all this all these things are going all on the there's time. so much going on in your in in your mind for those three hours mm-hmm. nothing else mattered in the entire world except for the paddle and mario and looking across at the boat, I could see Pat yeah. and my girlfriend Jerrica, and they were staring at me. And for three hours, there wasn't a word said, and we all shared that energy for the moment. And it was it's intense. It was so intense, and they could feel what I was feeling without having to say anything. And it was just paddling. It was just paddle. That's huge. Thank you, Mario. And it was. It's um, heavy. It is heavy, and it was extremely special. And that's a moment that we'll share. And then a couple hours later, everyone comes out. And I see all my friends and family, and mm-hmm. and as we're paddling in, um, there was a nasty surprise at the end. My, I didn't know my mom was going to be there, so my girlfriend had no linked up with my mom. I know. Come so, on, dude. So there she is. That's who you hug right out, right at the gate. Right at the yeah. gate. So I paddle. I'm paddling in. No. And I actually don't even see her first. Okay, I don't even see her. I just hear a very distinct. And I'm like, you're like, oh, you knew it. Eh? No way. Oh, and then I was keeping it together. And then as <laughs> soon as I heard that, I just started bawling. Oh. Like I, I was, I, I lost it. I was, I was thought it was gonna be okay. And it was, it was okay. I love to feel my emotions. And I got off the board and I just cried and I just hugged her. And like to this day, I'll tell her those. That is like a special moment that we'll share for the rest yeah. of our lives. You can't buy that. No, you can't. You can't, you and can't recreate that. Not them. No, and it, oh, and it was happy. and it was amazing, man. Like going through that yeah. that whole experience and seeing the support, and knowing the impact that I could have, like mm-hmm. it was life changing. Dude, I can imagine. Now, when you were paddling, no matter what time, um, and you saw people paddle halfway across the lake to give you a check. People like cheering from their docks, making signs, right, with their kids. Like, you know, how they know about you is like, it's awesome, right? Because they probably see you on the news or they see you like around or their parents, right? How does that make you feel when you're at the beginning stages of that and you see all that? Like, how does that feel? Like, is it just like, oh man, it's super cool. Like, where, how does that hit you? No, it's, uh, it's, it's mind boggling because I'm behind the camera every day mm-hmm. and sure I know there's thousands, hundreds of thousands of people oh, for watching, sure. yeah. but I don't see them. So when yeah. I'm doing those things and I see the people come up and they're talking about my brother-in-law and what I'm doing or they, oh, how's your puppy doing? And these things and the end of a check, you know, yeah. it just goes to show that the impact, um, that I'm having and they're, they're honestly, selfishly, they're, I don't know if there's a better feeling than that, than yeah. knowing that those people are doing these things. And it's it's still surreal to me. I think I'm still kind of getting used to it. Cause yeah. it it's still a little bit like, oh, like I'm just like, it's just like anything, right? I'm just mm-hmm. like coming on and doing the weather, but it's... It's, it's perspective, right? Like exactly. It's perspective. So 
it still warms my heart and I'm I'm grateful for every single person that tunes in that donates that does anything like that because that's what everything is all about for yeah. what I do it's all about right. those connections that's connecting cool. with somebody every day so I'm still it, I'm still extremely grateful for those experiences and every single time doesn't matter how many there are I'm always like oh, like that is so nice. cool <laughs> So I can imagine there are a bunch of uh, experiences, that kind of mini experiences, right, that took place during the 24 hours. Um, I want to ask you about a very specific experience. What was it like having a support boat for only 23 hours and 40 minutes? Yeah. The time? Like, what happened there, man? Tell me about that. Pat, uh, Pat mentioned to me that there was a 20-minute span that... We couldn't get it from couldn't get him for the full day. Eh? Oh like, my what, uh, what goodness! What happened? What happened there, dude? The like, time uh, that they lost me. Yeah, at, yeah. Uh, at night time, what support boat for the support boat? Yeah, I. You know what? It is so funny. Telling the story is hilarious because awesome. we were only. Um, I took off at six thirty. This is about ten o'clock, so we're only a few hours in. At but this it's point. dark. Oh, it's dark. Yeah, it's dark. So we're only a few hours in, but it's Amazing. it's pitch black. And um, we were getting a night shooter from CTV to come yep. out on the boat to get some night shots of me. Oh, okay. So we pulled up in, in the support boat. They picked him up. We got the night shots. Yeah. And then he had to leave. So they dropped him back off. And mm -hmm. they said, well, like, stay right in this bay right here. Or, like, like along the shoreline. And yeah. we'll come back and find him. So, yeah, no problem. Easy, right? Easy. So I started paddling the shoreline. And going and going. It's, it's starting to become, like, pitch black. And I'm starting to think, like, where are they? Like, it couldn't have taken this long. To just so pick up like, the person. To just pick up, yeah. or drop them off, yeah. Drop them off, that's right. Yeah. And But I I know that where they were dropping them off is a little bit shallow, so I'm like, oh man, did they, did they get stuck? And, and you're like playing out worst case. Oh, oh worst case. No. And as soon as you get into that situation, all you're you about yeah, is worst case, default right? default to the worst possible And thing, I'm like, yeah. oh, like, I don't have anything. Like, oh. like they have my phone, they yeah, have everything. Nothing, I'm out right? here in the dark, and I'm that's like, right. I'm like, all right, okay, here we go. And then I see this boat go by, and I'm like, oh, and I'm like, nope, nope, that's not bad. No, dude. And then I see this, and this was probably a good, yeah, a good, you know, whatever time it was, 30, 40 minutes, 20, 40 minutes. It seemed a lot longer, I'll tell you that, because on the paddleboard, I got no light. Yeah, no sense of time. No, I mean, you no. probably had your watches, but that's about it. Yeah, I just had my watch, so, oh, and then I, then I see this boat in, like, the bay, okay? But the, the boat that I had, it was Legend Boats, and it had, like, a blue light around the whole exterior, yeah. exterior of it, so you could see it from a mile away. Right. So this boat came into this bay and, and sat on. there with just, a, yeah. a, like, the light. So I'm like, okay, like, that's not them. And that was that like that for probably like ten minutes. Because there's no blue light. There's no blue light. And then all of a sudden I start hearing and getting closer. And then I start hearing Pat's voice and Jericho's of voice. Course, yeah. And then so then they're like, Put your headlight on. They're all freaking out. They find me. I'm like, well, why is the Put blue your light on? <laughs> why is the blue light on? That's why amazing. we have this thing. So we have this big back and forth. Amazing. And then the, but the best thing was then they tell me their side. Oh. And it was like, so I'm like, guys, we're three, four hours in and my support boat breaks down. Come on, we need to pull it We haven't even here. made a dance I into know. this thing yet. I know. So and yeah. Get your shit together. I was like, come on, get it together. <laughs> Amazing. And so they're thinking, they go out, they're following the shoreline, yeah. they can't find me. So from their mind, they're like, oh no, like where is he? Like, we told him to follow the shoreline, we told him to follow the shoreline. And I had, I had just paddled further than they further thought than I was going thought. to. Oh no. So then um, my buddy Ryan puts his, his head in his hands on the driver's oh, seat, puts dude. his head down, we lost him. Jerrica oh. loses her mind. Yeah. Pat's like, and the inside, freaking uh, out, but yeah, trying yeah. to keep it together for all them. <laughs> Classic. Like, and then they finally find it's me. Like if blah, I lose blah, blah, it, blah. everything's off. Exactly. Yeah. So Amazing. as soon as they found me, he's like, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I was yeah. losing my mind. <laughs> <laughs> like he was, but he kept it together for the two of them. Amazing. Because there was, there was some emotional moments that went on there. And I and I pull up. I'm like, hey, guys, it took you so long. But they had a full freak out. Because it's like, when are they going to be able to find me? It's dark for a very long time. And I'm just... On Ramsey Lake, so it was uh, that was hilarious, and it's still funny to this day. <laughs> Brother, I've heard him tell two different people that story, and I remember him telling me because we were on Ramsey, we were plunging in moonlight. It was like eleven o'clock on like a Thursday, yeah, and we were plunging at moonlight because we go at night. It's quiet, it's dark, right? The lights and it hits different, right? It's quiet, it's calm, no stress, right? Easy. Um, and I remember us sitting there. Speak of the devil, actually. There he is. Yeah. So <laughs> if I had everything hooked up, I put him on, but no, yeah. no. Um, so he was like, uh, he told me that. He's like, yo, so we lost Will. I was like, what do you mean you <laughs> lost Will? Like, that's how he prefaced it. He's like, yo, so by the way, we, uh, we lost Will um, on the paddle. I'm like, hold on. 
you didn't think to it was like a week two weeks after dude yeah like and i'm like what do you mean you lost will on the paddle i'm like first of all you're not in san diego right yeah. you're not a, like san clemente island you know like you'll be fine yeah don't worry right there's no sharks you'll be good i'm like if you fall in you'll swim to sh like you'll be all right yeah you know you wouldn't be on the water if you were terrified of right right so i was like he'll be good if he's lost that's what i'm thinking when he's telling me this right i'm like hold on you guys had a motorboat yeah a plethora of people every couple hours always on like kayaks and stuff and like people you were live streaming the majority of it there's x amount of videos um how do you lose <laughs> you i'm like in the first couple hours you failed to do the one thing I just went off and I'm like, in like a humorous way, right? Because I love the guy. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm like, course. who am I to give him crap about this? Yeah. Right? So I'm like, you failed to do the one thing that you had to do, not even one twelfth yeah. of the way through the paddle. And he's yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, dude. Yeah, well, we, and then he, after I said my whole like five minute bit about how I'm like, you guys failed to do your one yeah. job, you know, and he's, I'm losing it and like uh, laughing because I can't believe he just told me this out of nowhere. Like, it's quiet for three and a half minutes, dude. Yeah. And Will, he goes, yeah, so we lost Will. <laughs> he's still I'm thinking like, about I'm it. I'm like, hold on. <laughs> like, it was just so quiet. I'm yeah. Like, this lake's great. And he's like, so we lost Will. I was like, what's going on here? That so, means he still feels bad. That means he still thinks yeah, yeah, about it. Yeah, it's probably because he didn't feel, he didn't take it seriously right at the beginning. Yeah. Right? He's probably like, ah, they're freaking out for nothing. And he's like, ah, it's just Will. You yeah. Know? And then he's like, oh, shit. I shouldn't have thought. I we oh, can't no. find him. Yeah. Oh, no, we can't find him. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't take it seriously right away. Maybe if I took it seriously, we would have found him sooner and he wouldn't have drowned. I'm like, yeah. dude, there's yeah. no sharks. No. He can swim to the shore. There's lights. Yeah. It was, he'll be okay, worst case scenario. Yeah. But I'm like, dude, amazing. A few hours in, support team yeah. breaks down. Just failed to yeah. do the one. Nowhere to be found. As soon as it gets dark, to the worst time, right? Like <laughs> literally, yeah. pitch, you're like, it was pitch black. It was pitch black, and, and like <laughs> around moonlight, there's no lights. That's true. Because all yeah. all the cottages and all the homes, the Bell Park, it's lit up, no problem. I wouldn't need anything. Yeah, because the boardwalk. There, it's, yeah, it's black and it was foggy, so like you couldn't see anything. Ooh. So yeah, ten o'clock, probably musky. Dude, I was yeah. praying. Um, cause I didn't, I didn't know you, but I knew what you were doing, what you were doing it for. I knew of you. I had talked to Pat a bunch and how serious he was taken about it. I talked to Chris a handful of times before as well. And just hearing how, cause I had saw him recently, Pat and I paid a visit to his house and, um, we chatted and then hearing how enthusiastic they were about what you were doing and hearing why you were doing it. And then to now hear it, doing it for, see your brother-in-law. Yeah huge like absolutely epic i'm like i'm at loss of words to be honest when i hear like doing something like that because that's that's a full day man that's a lot of like commitment and stuff and what was your like mental preparation like for that because i found in my past experiences with things um with that i need to prep for mentally it's great if we're if i'm chatting with friends and i'm like yeah guys in two weeks i got a jiu-jitsu tournament but if it's I compete at 9 a.m. on the Saturday morning and it's 11.30 on Friday night and I haven't slept and no one's around and I'm by myself with my thoughts. That's when that shit comes into play. Yeah, absolutely. Right? What was your like mental training like or your, like, your mental preparation, let's say? What was that like? Because that's, that's a long time. Yeah, so I did a couple of things to prepare myself. I knew that if I had done these things, I would feel better come to the night, the day of. Yeah. So I went on some nighttime paddles to get used to the dark because... Yeah going through the dark is a whole different beast. Like when it's not light out there, your whole mindset changes. Yeah. So I went through the night a couple of times and then I did a few big paddles. Like I did lots of training, so I knew that I, I could do it, but my longest paddle was 12 hours. And that felt long, like I, I did it and I was like feeling good, but it's like, I have to double that. Yeah. So I'm going into it, I was like, okay, like it, it's, still, it's still a huge task, Humongous, what I'm gonna be yeah. doing. Um, but you know what, and, and this is what, this is what I'll, I'll tell everybody when they ask me, you know, what was it like doing that or like your hardest point or what it was. And to be honest with you through the amount of, I'm going to say adrenaline that I had from all the months of prep, the, um, uh, awareness of like that we were live on TV, the support vote, the reasons behind it. I felt so 
confident and I felt so good and I, I knew that the entire time that Mario was beside me mm -hmm. and I could feel that and that got me through the entire paddle. There might have been a small window leading up to like, or sorry, in like the middle of it when it was like 2 a.m. and I just got like the yawns because it was like time to go to bed Yeah. and I just thought about him and powered through. But like the mental prep going into it, I knew I had months to think about like this is this is not about me. This is about Mario and the impact that he had on me, mm -hmm. and I'm doing this in his honor. So every single time that I, I thought about the paddle, all I was was excited to get out there awesome. and be able to do my part in helping other people in mm -hmm. very difficult situations. So I just thought about that the whole time. That was my mindset. Nice. And then you know I rested the day before. Pat came over the day of and he was talking there one of my best buddies was there a girlfriend had laid out a bunch of food and stuff mm -hmm. that i carried with me um so I, honestly i didn't even have a, a moment of oh no or oh crap yeah like, what have i got myself into now? yeah it was just you've trained for this you know that you can do it and remember the why the purpose mm -hmm. behind what you're doing right oh, that's cool yeah i think that sounds like it's just very you're very confident in your preparation, right? Yeah, absolutely. Like, if the training was there, I had paddled so much four times a week. And my minimum pow pa paddles were three hours on the water. That was as the minimum that minimum I was going out there, doing, yeah. right? So it was like three on a Tuesday, three on a Thursday, then five on a Saturday, six on a Sunday. Just consistency. Yeah, so I knew that the numbers were there. So I was confident in that, but you never know like what it might bring, what the weather was going to be like. There were so many question marks, but mm -hmm. I was definitely confident in that way, and I had a wonderful, wonderful support team with me through the whole time with Pat and Jerrica, oh, and then with friends that came in and out, like yeah. Chris, yeah. Um, like Matt, like Dennis, like Richard, the people that came out and supported me through the actual mm -hmm. paddle itself. Oh, that's cool, man. So with all the preparation and all the like confidence you had going into the long paddle. Jeez, every time I think of like paddle for a day, oh, damn. But um, <laughs> could you define, like what's your, what would be like your definition of like hard work? Definition of hard work. Um, like just from what you've seen and what you've seen as something that's achieved or when you think you've worked hard or what you've seen from other people? Yeah, that's a really good question. I think that it's a couple of things. I think that it's something that you can definitely see in somebody. Um, I think that it's continuing to do something that you're failing at to ensure that you don't fail at it anymore. I think that that's super important because mm -hmm. without failure, you can't grow. And it doesn't yeah. matter what it is that you're doing. It could be, it, yeah. it, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter if it's business related, fitness related. So if you see someone that keeps trying to do something or try to better themselves or trying to attain this goal, let's say it was, you know, weightlifting and you're trying to hit this weight and you just can't and you can get in your head or quit. Let's say it was something at a job and you keep going through it, through it or law school and you're trying to pass the bar and you keep and then you get it. Yeah. I think that that's the being able to continuously do something like that shows a lot of hard work. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think... I think it's different for each individual person for what that means relative towards what they're trying to accomplish. Right. Um, for me, that was definitely hard work balancing it all. So like yeah. It was hard work, you know, the TV <laughs> side, the emotions, the family, the charity, mm -hmm. the sponsors, the workouts. I mean, the workouts alone were, that was, just, that was my whole life. Yeah, minimum three hours on a board. Yeah. Three yeah. hours plus the workout, yeah. right? So it was five workouts a week plus the three, six, you know, 15 hours a week paddling. Yeah. So the time wasn't there. That's crazy. Um, but you know what? But I, I think of hard work even as something that I, I think about when I was a kid. My dad owns a contracting company, so I was there on a lawnmower yeah. as soon as you were able to. <laughs> yeah. And out there with a plower, and you see the difference between hard work when you get into a business and people that are just there to check in and check out. I think it's very adamant based Ooh. on... Um, visually just what you can see and mm -hmm. like we talk about the energy levels and what people project yeah. so i think that's the biggest the case of it because you can tell right away from mm -hmm. somebody um if they're working hard or not but to me it's like something like that that continuously doing something that's difficult that you can one day accomplish i think that's the key of what you said too just now you said uh like it's do continuously doing something that's difficult mm -hmm. right i think the difficulty makes it makes the result not guaranteed but worth it like you get there if it's difficult but anyone can do something every day that's easy yeah right but where's that level of challenge that you get because it's the uncomfortability and the you might fail at it if it's hard yeah 
but that's what, like you said, that's where you grow and that's where you notice the biggest, like most drastic changes. Yes. Right. And, and like you just said, uncomfortability, stepping out of your, un- com- like out of your comfort zone mm-hmm. is the most important thing that you can do in your life for growth. And I understand yeah. that now more than ever. Oh, like, for sure. If you just, if you just stick in this, this <laughs> one hole and just, you, you're here, no matter whether it's, you're staying at home or you're not going out because of this, or you're yeah. staying in this fitness just because it's a routine and you're comfortable with it, you're not going to grow. You're not going to gain perspective. You're exactly. not going to understand things outside of that bubble. Mm-hmm. And that's how you're able to get to certain mindsets and yeah. perspectives like I believe that we Amazing. achieved. And yeah, that's, sure. that's just the beginning. There's so oh, much more, but, but understand it, exactly. understanding that allows you to, to do things like that. So mm-hmm. I think that's really important. Now, something I've kind of notice lately and whether it be talking to people um on the show or whether it be just researching people i kind of like to study patterns of people doing or achieving things that i want to achieve whether it be with podcast or business or just athletics in general and study kind of what patterns that they put together in order to achieve their goals and one thing i noticed lately with one guy is um he posted like a list of all the guests he had on he was gonna he was like having and had lined up for his show and i was like are you crazy this is huge (laughs) man i'm like wow you know and so seeing that (laughs) and then reading like what he said he was like dude the whole thing what he says he's like he led with not only he's like it's six years of hard work and the secret the one thing that stood out of this big post and stuff that I found with him and then a lot of other people is he's a more consistent than 90% of the population. And I was like, Ooh. And he's like, this is how many episodes I've done in this amount of time. I'm like, wow. Okay. So that's where the whole, my mindset then shifted from, I'll do once every couple times a month, maybe if things can line up. I'm like, no, be serious. Take it seriously. Once a week, like grow it try to be like just get better at a skill right like Mm -hmm. develop conversation skills develop like your charisma like learn about your guests research prepare for conversations and things you things you think would be good and like hence the chat before we even meet each other in person right like all that stuff to kind of gauge the energy engage what we should talk about and figure out we shouldn't and where to kind of line make it as good as a a conversation and as fun as an experience for both of us and for the audience and i think that's something that's huge because you said it a bunch of times where you said continuously yeah it continuously like dude it's huge how much of a role being consistent and doing something continuously play yeah that's and how like you achieving grow. what you want right like the, yeah. the more the more i paddle the better i'm going to get at paddling the more you mm-hmm. podcast the more you're going to come up with different ideas yeah. or different guests or different mannerisms or different things that you're able to do to dude, make ridiculous. it bigger and greater yeah so being able to do that and continuously working hard on that and showing that you care, mm. it's not like the, so many people think things like happen overnight and it's in, you know, you'll talk to the, some of the most successful people. They'll always tell you it was a grind. There was, was all of these things yeah. and hundreds of thousands of hours spent doing this before I got yeah. to here. It wasn't like an overnight Dude, it's crazy. This thing. And, <laughs> and so that's, that's why it's so important mm-hmm. to do things like that. You know, like, you know what, if you're serious about this subject, a go at it, full guns blazing, you know, give it everything mm-hmm. you have. Yeah. And no matter what happens with that, even if you give it everything you have and you find out it's not for you, you know that you, you have the answer. You, yeah. Yeah. You have the answer. Oh, this wasn't it. I gave this everything I have. This isn't the right. At least, you know, me. knowing you tried everything. Yeah, absolutely. Uh-huh. Which, which is important because I'm, I'm a firm believer in, like not having any regrets and doing things right. like like no do this regrets, or you yeah. know what even if, if even if it's something simple like oh I'm not like feeling that well today but I had this trip planned but you know what imagine you like miss out on, on, on that or something like you know that's just like a small thing mm-hmm. but I think it's really important to do as many experiences and and things as possible because I don't want to ever wake up one day and go I should have done this yeah. I wonder what that would have been like yeah that's about, what will haunt me. Mm. Yeah, it's not something that I um, really ever want to experience. No. No. Like, could you imagine, like, you see it in, in people, and you can see it in adults, and even, like, all the time our friends going on, you're, like, you're, you're going down this path. Like, you're yeah. going down the path where you're not going to be happy later on in life. And it's very hard to, 
it's very difficult to express that to someone, especially someone that's close to you. Like, you yeah, know what, I don't tough, think you should be doing Because they look at you as not somebody who, like, they look at you as somebody, oh, why are you giving me free advice? You know, like, yeah. it's like, who are you to, because they look yeah. at you as, like, maybe like a friend or like an equal of somebody who's like, maybe, well, what do you know? Yeah. That's the one. It's like, well, my whole brain is works, is wired differently. And the worst part is that I found is the further you go down the path, the harder, the deeper you go down the hole, the harder it is to climb out, right? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. And a lot of people are like, well, if you got there, chances are climbing back out isn't going to happen. Yeah, it's very difficult to do that. Very. So understanding that you need to either back out of a situation or continue to do something yeah. else is, is super important. Um, but that's, that's, that's something that, you know, there's a lot of things that I'll continuously gain perspective on mm -hmm. or think about or learn. But I know for a fact that that is a simple fact that I do not want to have regrets yeah. in my life because I know that it, I will it will just eat me alive Dude, knowing yeah. like, like oh man like I didn't take this job opportunity or do this or I didn't do this or, or no matter what it is and you know even if the reason is is so silly at the mm -hmm. time you look back and you go wow yeah, I dude. can't believe I didn't do this because of this. Mm -hmm. How ridiculous is that? I missed out on potentially what could have been an incredible experience because of this and like it doesn't <laughs> matter what it is. And you think yeah. back when you think back to high school and stuff, you're like, oh my god, I put like, so much pressure on one decision, yeah, and now it means nothing. It means nothing. Yeah. And you think about all these things, and I, I I constantly think about how how little those things were, but at the time, it is like. It's it's like everything in your world, yeah, no matter what it is. You know, you're, you're growing yeah. up in these emotions, and like it's so important. You're like it, that's the whole world to you. And now I'm at a point when you look back in those situations, and I'm like, no oh, man, Will, you got some things to learn, man. <laughs> like, come on, it's not so bad. There's so much more to life, and it, it, it's so funny to think about that and be in a be in a mindset now to look mm -hmm. back and go, oh, poor kid, dude, hundred yeah. percent. Poor kid. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. She's not the one. Don't worry. <laughs> it's always a habit. It's, it's always always like, ah, She's not the one. She's not the one. She was at the time. Yeah, she was. She was. <laughs> oh, man. My friends thought she was cool. My yeah. mom hated her. But, uh, yeah, but it doesn't matter. At that time, it's all that matters. Oh, man. Dude, there's a... Uh, I've definitely had situations like that or relationships like that and we're not gonna get into that but it's just there you may i mainly get it best for my siblings where they'll be nice and then it's like hey you guys broken up yeah so this is what we actually thought about it. i'm like <laughs> well thanks bro yeah that's the best yeah you know that's what and, and that's actually funny because that's a similar situation when we talked about like perspective and mindset and stuff like that where it's like when you're so close to something yeah. and, you, and you're in it, you don't really see it. And no. then you take it, and then when you're out of it, and then you look back and you're like, whoa, because you were too close. Yeah. And you're just like, I can't believe now I understand everything. And again, perspective is everything because you're able to step out and, and see that part of your life or where you're at after that. And you're just like, oh, I can't believe like I did that or went through that or yeah. was treated that way, yeah. whatever it might be. And mm. I, I think that's a wonderful tool in learning what you want for the future. Mm, what's that? What's that saying? I was thinking about it. You reminded me of it. It's you, you're stand so close to the tree. You can't see how big the forest is. Yeah. Something like yeah, that. Something right? like like that. I'm yeah, knocking yeah. on the door for sure. I think what that's it, it. Yeah. But yeah, perspective's huge. I think that's a, uh, that's why, um, like that's been my going motivation for, and drive for like, traveling places yeah because there's nothing like seeing the world or difference it could be anywhere like you said right i'm sure it's very different when you go oh, i lived in ottawa from 18 years now <laughs> move out west you're like big difference yeah it's still in canada but you're like dude huge difference major perspective shift and it adds to you right like you're yeah. able to take in more and it's just more information more perspective and you learn more you see how things are done differently and I think what's cool is when you're in a situation like that and then you go to places like, and I think that was the big key factor of like, lo not losing people, but um, growing, outgrowing like people who you grew up with that didn't do any of the experiences you did mm -hmm. or didn't even have the drive to. And you come back from these big places and your brain is so like, your, your eyes wide open, yeah. right? And then they don't have that, you know, and that's where I think that's where it starts. 
to build something yeah, like it that's where it becomes separate. challenging exactly. between you and, and continuing on with those relationships because mm-hmm. the mindsets are just so different yeah. and you understand so much more about life and you've everything that you do like that going out west or whatever it is you're doing it becomes a part of who you are now mm. and, and you don't go back like once you go through experiences like that you can't go back never you never go back never. once you go through anything like that or anything that's significant you you just keep going forward mm-hmm. and, and it's it, amazing and isn't it? it is amazing mm-hmm. it's, it's honestly one of the, the greatest feelings ever and it's not that like someone you know there's still people that look like, people will still like let's say the old thing hold you back right like people yeah. hold you back and like friends but that's yeah. where that divide i think happens between yeah the divide definitely yeah and people that want to stay in this and do do this and they're and they're happy with that and you know what if if they're actually happy with staying like that the rest of their life and doing that then that's great but now that i've experienced this that's not okay for me and right. i think that everyone should want more mm-hmm. um and, and I think that it's very difficult for people to step out of that. Again, getting out of your comfort zone to go through an experience like that is the first step. And so many people out there can't do that. And it's, yeah. it's a shame because it a shame. It's, um, it's wonderful to go through those things and continuously learn and grow more so than ever just about yourself. Because mm-hmm. that's what it's like when you go through these things. Right. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, I could not agree more. Yeah. Yeah, dude, dude, for sure. For <laughs> sure. Like, yeah. I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm right on. Yeah. I, I agree with you for sure. Yeah. It's not something that's, um, that can pull you back. You know, no. like going through those things and understanding and building. And I find I connect better with better people. Because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, that's, we're all just trying to grow. Yeah. Right. And I think, and you said it earlier, and I want to touch on it back then, um, but came full circle now yeah um said purpose and i think purpose has been um has been in the same compartment as and train of thought for me lately as the term fulfillment Mm -hmm. and i think when you say purpose like i hear purpose and i think same thing as fulfillment right you know brother sister exactly so like okay looking for the purpose or why we're doing it and you have your purpose and following that purpose leads you down Leads you down a life to fulfillment. Yeah. Right? And they're Absolutely. paired together well. And I think the way I think the way you're going is absolutely incredible, dude. And I'm <laughs> grateful that I'm able to speak with you today and uh, have you on the show. And do you have any we covered a lot of really good stuff. I wanna know do you have any like last minute advice for like the young people watching, listening, uh yeah, I mean, I would just say going through all those experiences has brought me to where I am today. So if you're having a difficult time thinking about what you want to do, where you're at in your life, just know that there's so much more out there mm-hmm. that's going to occur for you. And going through those experiences and being able to do that at a young age and go yeah. through those things is so important because you need to do that and you need to experience more than just inside your box because once you do that you're able to gather so much more information about yourself which can link you towards your future and so i think that if if i were to give advice to anyone i would say step outside your comfort zone do these things you're a little scared to do because those are the meaningful things that you'll do in your life Mm -hmm. i love it yeah (laughs) will brother Tell uh, tell everybody where they uh, where they can connect with you, hear more from you, um, and uh, where can they check you out? Where can they find you? Yeah, so uh, I'm on the news every night, CTV News, Northern Ontario. <laughs> You'll find me doing the weather, sunny skies, rain or snow, it don't matter. <laughs> I'm always there. <laughs> You can find me on there, and then uh, I do most of my work on Instagram, mm-hmm. uh, just Will Aiello, uh, CTV Will Aiello on Twitter, and Will Aiello on Facebook. But most of my stuff's on Instagram, whether it be um, content that I do myself, mm-hmm. fitness stuff, or weather. Amazing. And then, yeah, of course, if you ever need a forecast, you know where to go. Don't open yeah. that app, turn on your TV, I'll let you know what the weekend looks like. Amazing. <laughs> right on, brother. I'm super grateful you were able to come on and. Uh, we're able to chat today. Yeah, so thanks for having me on, man. Thing, dude. Thank All you. All right, right on. Thanks, guys.